and welcome to my channel. I want to do a really a special video, if I can sit like that, because I think that's the first time that I do something like that. A little video about first impressions about a new builder called Drawip. I hope I do it. Uh, draw, draw IP. I, I think it's Drawip. I hope I say it well. It's a new builder uh, created by the Theme Um. Uh, team, which is the team behind uh, Tutor, Tutor LMS and uh, Kubli and others like that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do a little, uh, it's not really a review, a deep review right now. It's more of first impressions. Um, so first things first, Drip. Uh, team um, do already have a builder. Uh, let me try to see if I can find it. So here we go. So it's not on the first, it's not in the menu, it's not on the first page. But if you scroll down a little bit, you can see that you can find a WP page builder. Uh, this is a builder that I do possess, that I trusted once or twice and never really hooked to it. Uh, from what I saw, it hasn't been updated for at least one year. So. Clearly, this is a dying product, and Tmom will replace it with drops, draw it. Um, so, in other words, they've been in the page builder world before without really any success. So that's the first thing we need to consider in a certain way. My opinion: this was not a good builder at all. Okay, so that's the background of it. Second thing, uh, we must know that uh, well people say there's already a lot of uh, builders out there why create another one well some new builders are truly great so uh, there's no reason that a new builder cannot make its own place but it has to bring really something new something way better than the others uh, don't know if drip is one of them but it will have to uh, bricks breakdance were released uh, pretty close from each other and so uh, we can compare them together and those are in my opinion better builders than the older builders like Elementor, Oxygen and the others. So in that area okay Drop could be uh, one of those as well. That being said uh, there are other builders that I won't necessarily name <laughs> but I don't like as much that were released maybe a little bit before those two. So those two bring something new on the table. So Drip will have to do the same thing. It's not like if it was released five years later and brings a new way of doing things, uh, then it would be revolutionary. So I doubt it will be the case. But uh, of course, we will compare it to those new builders out there. Uh, Bricks, Breakdance, maybe some others that I know less of. So it needs to live up to the task uh, compared to those builders. Will it be the case? I don't know. First impression. So I start with a little bit, honestly, of negativity because of the previous experience with TMOM, with their builder, and even with some of their other tools. That being said, by looking at their own page, where they sell and they create an entirely different uh, website for this one by the way as opposed to the other products so that's uh, that could be something good <laughs> in a way maybe detach themselves in a certain way uh, but by looking at the sales page or the home page honestly it looks pretty good as somebody else has said about another builder I don't want to like it but so maybe I will like it because honestly the page is well built at least aesthetically some people, I think, have gone on mobile devices or have checked the background code and said that it was not that good. But anyway, aesthetically, in terms of uh, functions, also, you see, for example, if I scroll down here, I'm going to go to typography if I continue to scroll. So it sticks to that place. The things, typography, form builder, so on, everything is interesting uh from again a design perspective so will that be another elementor will that be another breakdance maybe when i talk about elementor breakdance what i mean by those builders is these are more targeted at designers 
make something uh, beautiful, make something flashy, make something moving, but not necessarily have more advanced tools like class builder and things like that. Okay. That being said, I know that at some point to talk about code, so let's take a look. So unlimited breakpoint, auto responsive design, custom breakpoint design, built for you. So reusable symbol makes me think a little bit with, uh, about breakdance about this thing here. So don't know how it handles uh, CSS. We'll see that classes to be more uh, precise. Global style manager. <coughs> so again, looks a little bit like that. Multiple backgrounds, so that's okay. Advanced typography. Dynamic data. So fetch data dynamically with powerful logic. It's supposed, and I know that uh, one of our member, David McCann, to, na to name him, I uh, said that he didn't find anything about dynamic data. So they mention it. So do they mean the same thing? Do they really mean custom post types and things like that? Or simply about displaying things dynamically, which is not necessarily the same thing. Okay. So we'll have to dig deeper into that. Uh, but one thing for sure, it was not obvious to find it if they have it. If they don't support dynamic data, like custom post types, in other words, like uh, ACPT, uh, ACF, toolset, and so on, uh, then that will be a major problem. So that was really just for designers. And of course, we agree that it's a first version, but again, it goes against really uh, established products. So it has to be really good from the start. Customizable guides, design for efficiency, quick structure, common guide styles, and so on. So you can take a look at that for yourself, drawip.com. I won't cover everything. Here's the dev mode. So they talk about the dev mode. So clearly we can code there manually. Probably some CSS and here we talk about some JavaScript so or PHP, sorry. So clearly something good. Uh, well, not clear enough if it was JavaScript or PHP, but anyway. Clearly some coding here, that's okay. Doesn't mean that it handles classes and things like that well, like Bricks does though. Custom attributes, pseudo elements. So anyway, accessible to everyone. <laughs> if Kevin Geary uh, listens to that video right, right there, when we target everyone, we don't target anyone in a certain way because we try to go through broad. So is that a good thing that it's accessible to everyone? Well, <laughs> can be in a way, but it would be successful where others have fallen if it's the case, really accessible and brings everybody happy. Seamless integration with other tools like Elementor, Gutenberg, DV and more. So from what I've seen, there's a migration tool so that you can kind of import uh, import a previously made website. I won't take the time to look at that today because that's uh, really, like I said, uh, first impression. But this is something that I could look at to see if it works well, that's a great feature. If it doesn't, then <laughs> that can be worse than not having it at all. So we need to see. And so API integrations, MailChimp, PayPerform, and so on. And that's not all, CSS preview, blah, blah, blah. So let's skip that for now. We can do uh, getting started for free. So I'll show you the pricing later on. But what I did is I did click on one of the links and it does give you a 15 days for free, but it does create a site for you. So it doesn't give you access to downloading the plugin and installing it where you want. It actually does create a staging, if I can say it like that, or temporary site for you and send you the link. And that's what I have right here. Okay, so first look. First thing, we have a kind of a little uh, tour that guides us through the interface to show us where everything is. And that's really good, especially for beginners. I like that they do that. So uh, I won't take the time to read everything. I did that just before starting this video. And that's why I decided to create this video because this might not come back ever again. 
But that's a good thing. That's a good thing that they start with that. That's a good point for this first uh, part here. Now let's click done and see the rest. So we have a page already created for us. So again, that can be really useful to learn it. That's why we have a 15 days uh, trial. So it's like I said, if I would download the plugin, it will be on a brand new site. So empty site. Now we have access to different things. So let's see. We have the library on the left side or our elements that is highlighted right now, the different elements. Uh, we do have section container div blocks. This is pretty interesting. If you follow Kevin Geary, which I do, uh, you know that he will talk about that often. Why does this builder doesn't even have a div builder or container or things like that? So it does have it. And we have flex and grid layouts. So those two I'll probably take a look at later on in this video. It does have patterns as well and basic things, of course, like headings, text, images, and so on. Well organized text media. The problem is that since there's not a lot of things in each of them, you might have to scroll a lot or not find what you're looking for because there doesn't seem to be a lot of things here. Uh, so that's the first impression, but at least it is well organized. Basic things, media, is images, video, and things like that. Form elements, it does support forms. Again, seems pretty basic at first look. And then components, so things that are kind of uh, uh, blocks with many things inside of it, if I can say it like that, maps and so on. Let's take a look here. We have the, of course, the, uh, well, if I take a look at the pages here, it's a little bit like bricks from what I can see where we can see and add new pages directly from there. We have our layers. So here, editor, we have container. Okay, so that's a little bit like our structure of navigation panel. That's cool. Strange that it's on the same side that the elements though. Uh, it's not the only builder that does that. Personally, I prefer when it's on the other side, like in Elementor and Bricks, but some people like that. So element, as we said, not that many element. We have pre-built library. So if I take a look at, I don't know, hmm, a lot of uh, form elements here. So let's say cards. So we have few cards here. Very few, but at least we have some. Radio, so that means that we have pre made a radio button look, just one. So, one look like that. Is it really worth it? Again, it's a first version. It was released probably today since I received an email about that today. So, of course, we need to give it time to grow, but still. So, the, the elements are okay. Uh, hope they will add a lot more, uh, more practical ones as well. We have the breakpoints here, so we can go from one breakpoint to the other. We have three dots here, so can we add our own custom? Yes, we can. Select from the list or add your own custom breakpoint. Okay. We can also resize when we change the breakpoint, so that's okay. That's a good thing. Uh, we have the view right now. I'm 94% because of the spacing of the other elements, so my page is not 100%. I can scale it to uh, not scale it but scale to default default is not 100 percent okay so i will say larger it goes to 103 strange a little bit so we'll have to manually put it at 100 so 100 of course i will have a little scroll bar because of that i don't have enough space but at least i see really what will be on the page beside of course the two bars on each side uh audit if we have any errors so uh this is good missing link nine well okay that's just an example page so they put probably empty links that's okay accessibility panel that is great i really like the fact that they put that is it good that's another question but they do put an accessibility panel which tells me that they do put focus on accessibility. So 
fingers crossed that it's good <laughs> because it might not be uh, but anyway okay so this seems to be to test in other words okay you see I was expecting it to show me if we have errors for example we don't have enough color contrast things like that looks like it's more to simply test if I deactivate this thing what does my page look like so if I put larger text it looks like that but also for my panels if I disable motion of course I don't have any motion I think right now on the page big black cursor it's gonna look like that I have a pretty much big black cursor already big white cursor magnifier so if I do that so these are more tools to test from what I can see whoops okay looks like with the magnif magnifier toggle down it was a little bit hard to click on the right thing increase contrast we can increase it but then it doesn't really tell you whether uh, you are accessible right now or not and we can also do different color blindness so this is good this is really good a first a good first step what i would have preferred of course if it would tell me uh you don't have enough contrast color so change your color here uh the text is too small or things like that instead of just giving us tools which is not bad it's not bad at all to have those tools but i would have gone further that's what I was expecting when I saw that accessibility panel. Preview page. So this is probably what I clicked by mistake. It brings me to my browser to test it. And it does it to save every, I think they, saw, they said three seconds. So maybe that can be changed in the settings. Uh, but that's what they do by default. By the way, I have a little menu here. So other uh, options in the menu. My page setting is there but not necessarily the builder setting. I'm not even sure I have access to that since I'm in demo mode. All right, so the menu. <clears throat> Let's take a look at that. So first impression, we have a knife bar, so it makes me really think uh, about uh, Bootstrap. I don't know if it's the case here, but anyway, they call that a knife bar, but other builder does as well. Uh, we have our logo, we have the navigation, so it looks like a bootstrap site, but it might not be. So navbar, link block, the paragraph here. So that's my logo, in other words. Desktop menu, nav menu, nav item, link block. So it seems, at least for that menu here, it's not a WordPress menu. So a little bit like the new menu in Bricks, for example, for those who know about that one, it seems to be that you create your menu there manually with each element. So a nav menu, a nav item, a link block, and so on. So maybe you need to add all of them or you just bring one and it brings everything. Don't know. Uh, but you seem to build your menu directly there, at least in this case, which also at the same time tells me that for now, I don't see any templates for creating headers and footers so if i if i have just one landing page like it's the case here great i don't necessarily want to build a header and footer if i just have one page but what i have a, what about if i have a whole site with many pages then it might not be what i want so if i go with about for example does it take me down to another part of the site let's see if i select my text I have my class and subclass here, so I can specify a class. I can add a class to it. Um, but this is the typography look. Where is my link? So the link is not in typography. It's not in structure, of course. Size, background, shadow effect. Is it an interaction? object what oh where is my link actually id text is there any link on it you have ai content here more options dynamic custom attribute show and new attributes is it where we need to no 
This is not where we add the link. Where do we add the link? Advanced font editor, I hope it's not there. So you see, of course, once you know it, that's okay. But is it good that we need to search for it? Or that we need to absolutely listen to for a training video to be able to use basic things like link? In my opinion, we shouldn't. And I know Bricks is not the best one on that either. We need, for example, when you create a, the first template, it's not clear that you need to go to conditions to apply it. Uh, so not the best one in that regard, but still the menu, the elements, the panels are pretty obvious. This one, hmm. Okay, this is the text, this is the link block. Okay, that's me, maybe. <laughs> I need to be, I guess, on the link block to actually see the link, my guess. So link block here, but that's a class. Uh, now it goes on top of the typography. That's strange. That's really strange. You see, when I click on the text, it was smaller. But the uh, class and subclass is kind of uh, sticky, if I can say it like that. And the rest goes behind it. So if I already started to scroll, it's behind my bar. That's pretty strange. Don't like that part. Uh, but anyway, some people might like it. I don't know. All right. I see my little dot here. So it shows me that there's something in the structure, a little bit like bricks. Uh, probably other builders. I think Breakdance does that as well. Uh, so that's supposed to mean that I have something set here, but it's zero. So I don't know if zero is the default or we have set manually zero. Um, enable or disable structure. Okay. If I disable it, I guess my dot will remove, but seems to be the default one though. Uh, anyway. Still don't know where my link is though. So don't want to rant too much about that, but <laughs> pretty strange not to see the link at all. And direction would be the second best bet, but it's not there. Should be, a, I don't know, a common properties or something like that. Drop link item, drop link element, link block. I don't know why they have different icons here. If it's only classes, they shouldn't, I think. But again, yeah, not really intuitive in that regard. And I don't know at all where is that link? Where can I change it? So don't like that. Don't like that. Oh, there we go. We can have a link here. If I click on it, I can have my web address here. So if you're the type of people that like to have little uh, kind of toolbar like that that appears when you click on something, you'll like that. If like me, you're not a big fan of that, you prefer to go in the uh, panels on the sides, you will not like that at all. And uh, maybe I could get used to it. But uh, anyway, you see, if I click on the text, I don't have the text for the, the options for the link. So it will probably, uh, it's really not obvious to click on the link. The only way that I can click on the link, when I click on the text, it's the text. If I click below it, I select the entire nav menu. So I'll have to go to the layers and click on the link block to be able to see the link and change it or add it later on for a new element. Don't like that at all. There doesn't seem to be any breadcrumbs or something like that to select it either. So first view, we really need the layer panel. Well, okay. Now item. So without the layers panel, and of course I do, I do use structure or nav panel depending on the builder. Uh, but if you're the type that doesn't like to use it, you just want to click on things. Pretty uh, hard to do it this right here. Uh, I saw a little underline here, but yeah, I think, I don't know, I thought I was able to click on it. Okay, there we go. When I mouse over it, it shows me the text. If I click, I'm going to select the text. But it's a, if I mouse over 
Well, I thought. Anyway, let me try it again. If I click on the text, it highlights it in blue. And then if I mouse over the text, I can click on the parent item. So link block, nav item, and I have three little dots to go all the way up to the body element. But when I try to mouse over, okay. Okay, so that's partly good. Once you click on it, you can have access to the parent. So that's good. Not obvious to know though. So again, this is the kind of thing that you will need to have a little tutorial in order to know how to use it. But yeah, I think I like the ID. Once uh, you're used to it, if you really want to select that without having to have the layers panel open. Okay, not that bad. Not that good, <laughs> not that bad. All right, so this is for the menu. We have a button here. So same thing, I guess we have, I guess somewhere a link. I don't see a link. Button, text, SVG. Okay, so again, button. Where is the link for the button? What happens with the button when I click on it? An interaction? Mouse over, over in, over out. Create a custom response. Custom response. Wow. Pick an action. Move. Is that animation? Is it transition? I guess it's an animation. So if you want to do a hover effect or things like that, preview. Yeah, that's my little uh, icon here. And again, we don't see it that well. I need to move that. That's my little arrow that is an animated. So, okay. And I guess I need to toggle on live preview in order to see it when I move mouse over the button. Yeah, no. It does show me the uh, kind of transition for the background color, but not the arrow. Hmm. Still not where my... <laughs> A link is so where's my link pointer effect yeah structure size no link no link no link no link no link oh it's directly here again on the bar you have the link there always and always on the bar so looks like the uh First, at first view, this panel here is the styling panel that we see in other builders, and it never changes. It's always typography, structure, size, and so on. Really the styling panel. And everything else, the content panel that we have in Bricks, for example, or the element panel that we have in Elementor, things like that, we don't have that. It's only a little bit like in Brizzy, but Brizzy does go further than that. It's only be below it on that bar. Like it or not, seems to be the only place where you have it. So let's take a look at an image, for example. Is that an image? Yeah, we have the image here. Okay, so it's not a background image. It's a real image. We can toggle that visible or toggle the visibility here. So again, image, same thing. We have that little bar. That is partly hidden behind that bar. So strange here. Image effect, we have link. Replace image, blend mode, more options. So lazy load, USHD, IDPI, alt text. So kind of a mix with Breezy where you have everything in that bar and you have dynamic data here as well. So yes, we do have dynamic data. Um, Manual post site author. So if I say it's site dynamic data type site value site logo. Okay. If I say manual, I don't have any options here. Post featured image. Okay, so we do have some dynamic data here. Uh, for the link, can we put dynamic data on the link? Um, web address, email, ta -ta -ta section. 
Mm, doesn't seem so. I can put the image dynamically. Can I change dynamically the link? Mm, doesn't seem so at first view because dynamic here is only for the source, in other words. All right. Hmm. Okay. But again, nothing here. So yes, we do have kind of class first base, I guess. They call that a subclass. That is strange. So I can select one. If I want to type my own class, let's say uh, hero, hero, hero image. Can I do that? Okay, I can. So now if I select, for example, the, uh, what is the effect? On element opacity, if I reduce the opacity, supposed to be on, on, seems to be working not too bad. If I save, I guess control S because I don't see any save button. Whoops, no, okay. How do I save my page? Auto saved. Hopefully that's okay. Um, okay, it wasn't an interaction, but it looks like it's uh, always <laughs> the opacity is always there. So on element effect default. Okay, I need to say and text menu pointer wait. Okay. Resize, move, pointer. So is that pointer? Does it change the pointer or is the when the pointer interacts with it? Not clear. So do I change, do I choose pointer or I choose move? No, I guess it's not move. Let's, let's go with pointer. What happens? pointer if i change opacity it seems to work here but that's simply for me to select it i guess it doesn't seem to really work here now it does change a pointer maybe it was already like that but it doesn't change the uh, opacity on over so how do i do over wow How do I do over? Okay, maybe it's me. Again, bricks is not the best one in that area. So can I really throw stones? I don't know. Interaction, element, set of triggered. Mouse over, this is where we need to go. Wow, okay. Over in, what happens? Uh, Select from library or create a custom response. None. Fade in, fade out. Wow. Okay. Fade in. We only have basic. Fade in, what about fade out? Fade out big, but there's no just fade out. Let's go with fed out big. So. Boy, it did fade out big <laughs> without me interacting with it. Oh boy, okay. Hover in, mouse hover element. Not the page, the element itself. Mouse over, why not over in? Oh, well, is it really me? Well, now we have fade out. Why wasn't it available before? When I click on basic, I only add basic. Once I choose uh, something, it looks like I have other options, but I needed to select it first. Another strange thing. Direction, fill mode. But again, still not what I was expecting. No, not at all. 
So pretty hard. Let's move on to something else before uh, before you leave and before I start to uh, to say bad things. Okay, so button. This is a button. Outline. Image. So I don't don't like the overall feel. Uh, what I tried or was trying to do is to say that if I create something here, let's say something really strange, but let's say I change the typography. Okay, I don't have any typography there. That's okay. But is it part of the class now or still on the ID? How do I know that? Am I, am I changing the... Oops. Am I changing the arrow here, the arrow? Or where do I put it? On image one, on image two, on hero image? How do I know? If I click on image two, I have the size that has something attached to it, FX as well. If I click on hero image, same thing. If I click on image, same thing. So, how do I know where I toggle, where I put my CSS? Okay, sorry, really, really, really bad experience. It looked pretty good on the uh, sales page. Experience is really bad so far. Sorry about that. I can't say it's me, of course, but it's a first look video. So what do you expect? First look is bad. <laughs> Let's say um, I want to add, we have media here. I want to add an element at the end of the page. So if I add a new section, where will it add it? I need to drag and drop it, probably. Okay. So here we go. Drag and drop element here. If I click on that, nothing happens. So. And we'll need to add a container, I guess. Okay. What I want is a flex grid or grid. Not flex grid. <laughs> it's only an ACSS. All right. So grid. How does grid work in this builder? So 1FR, 1FR. Uh, you need to know what our fractions. If I move that. Okay. 0.25 FR and 1FR. Who decided that? Five, oh boy, okay. <laughs> I almost didn't move and it decided it was five FR and one FR, so. You see my arrow here, my cursor? I moved just a tiny bit, but whew, boom, boom. Big, big changes. Big changes ahead. Warning, big changes ahead. Wow. Okay, so it doesn't take at all where my cursor is when I click on that. It decides by itself the amount of space here. So not a good user experience. I've seen other builders that don't even have grids, so we can say that it's good in that regard, but uh, not a good experience. Now, if I click on that, what does that do? Okay, create area. So this is more advanced stuff. Not everybody knows about those things. Uh, Pine Grow. The Pine Grow uh, tutorial that I talked about previously in other videos is a good resource for that. Working with fractions, working with area. But this is an advanced stuff that not everybody knows how to deal with. Okay, I have a little bar here, drag panel. So two columns. Uh, if I want to have three columns, this is where I need to do that. I do have a little plus here or so, so I guess I can add columns there as well. Hopefully, yes, I can, okay. Same thing for rows, column gap, okay. So I changed that to rem, I can. So two rem, let's say. And that's a good thing. Can I type four or three rem here? Yes, okay, I can type three rem and it does keep the rem. If I say 10 pixel, will it change that to pixel? Yes, it does. So, okay. I've seen worst, but uh, 
I've seen better as well. <laughs> so row gap, delete, done. So we get out of there and we change that. If we want to edit that, we go back there again. So two rim as well, let's say. Okay, not the worst experience. Not the best one. I can toggle from grid to flex. Looks, looks like anyway. Yeah. So if I click on that, I move to flex. If I click on that, I will go back to grid. Now I can change or choose type of grid that I want. So again, the thing that I don't like, I could do a conclusion right away. Not a lot of elements. But especially the biggest thing that I don't like at all is that when you select something, you just have that little bar or something, another little bar at the bottom, like in this case here, to manipulate things. That's one of the reasons I don't like Breezy, by the way. So it makes me think about Breezy. I don't like that at all. I don't like that kind of experience. Here, it's like we have the style panel, but that's all we have. Didn't even know, uh, I know that we can go on the back end, well, that's at least what they say on the sales page, to change the code. How do we do that? I don't know. Right click, cut, create symbols, duplicate, add class or name, arrange to, rotate, add interaction, add link, create symbol. We have the uh, Mac shortcuts, even though I'm on PC. I'm not the only one who does that, I really don't like that. Don't put, put both or don't put any, <laughs> but don't put Mac keyboard shortcuts on a PC, please. Um, and of course the opposite, don't put a Windows shortcut on a Mac as well. I guess they would say the same thing. Where do I see the code? Well, can I change the code? I don't know. I've seen enough. So, <laughs> we have a code block here, of course. So, code. Embed custom code. So, I don't know if that says what they call the code editor. Uh, I don't know. Script. Let's say, I don't know, alert. Hello world, have you seen that? <laughs> do i need to put my script tag or not no i guess so because it doesn't know whether it's html css or javascript doesn't support php but again not the only one so i guess i didn't i don't even know i guess i've put it at the end so hopefully that will work hello world Okay, so anyway, I hope you've seen enough to make your own opinion. For me, that's a beautiful builder. That's a beautiful sales page. Not a good experience at all. Personally, it's the first time and probably the last time. Don't think that I'm going to do... I may, I may do the uh, landing page uh, video that I usually do with every builder to see how it works, if I can do all the things, how long does it take, and then read the performance. Again, it will be pretty hard with the demo, so I would have to create a real account, which is free for one year. Yeah, let's talk about pricing. Conclusion. <laughs> cool. Single website, it's free for the first year. After that, $3 per month. Does it include hosting? Doesn't say. Doesn't say. Uh, does it say here? I would doubt it because that's a plugin, that's a page builder. So I will doubt that it's included, but it doesn't say. So if it's $3 per month, that means $36 per year. Ah. Okay, but then we have more licenses, 3, 10, 50, and unlimited, monthly or yearly. So let's go with the worst one, yearly, unlimited, $500. Wow, $500.
That's twi two licenses of Brick Lifetime. That's, uh, I don't know if Breakdance is still at 150 for uh, if you like it right now, but even if it's not, it's way more than that. It's even more than Elementor, you might guess. Well, Elementor, they will say it's not unlimited, but still. How is it Elementor now? Elementor. If we buy just, I hope we can still buy just the plugin, yeah. So 1000 site is $400. I know they went more than that at some point, but they reduced their prices. They even Elementor themselves saw that they were too pricey. Imagine they're $400. Drawip is $500. Is there a difference between a thousand site and unlimited site? Yeah, well, most of the people will now not go up to 1,000 sites anyway. So we have more flexibility than Breakdance, for example, and even uh, Bricks, which has one site or unlimited, I think. But still, price is very, very high. So not a good experience, not a good pricing. In my opinion, this is not a builder I would use at all, uh, unless they really improve it with feedback. But I don't like the philosophy. I don't like the fact that we have a bar every time we click on something. And again, I know that some people like Breezy because of that. Uh, that's the revolution that Breezy brought uh, for people that do like it, but I don't like it. Even with uh, Bricks or other builder, when we edit text, Elementor does that, I think, as well. We do have that bar that appears at least for text. And even then, I always go inside the panel and change it there 90% of the time. So not a big fan of bars like that. Personally, if you really like that, then maybe you like this builder. Not my case. So anyway, that's my overall review. I hope you like it. I don't know if you agree with me or don't agree. Please leave a comment below and tell me what you think about that. Did you, did you test it? Will you test it? Uh, do you like their approach or like me, you really uh, want to stay away as far as you can from that builder? So please tell me about that and see you in the next video. Have a good day.